Hi there, Russ Drury from the Success Crew here at Zeppelin. In this video, we're gonna take a look at local style guides and how to set those up and use them for your project. I'm currently looking at a project that I've previously been working on. You'll notice right at the top of the screen here, we have two options. We have our dashboard, which we're looking at all of the screens in our project. We also have this style guide. So if I go ahead and click on that, that will open up the local style guide that is specific for this project. And as I open that up, you can see that we actually have some notifications indicated on two of these pages. And I'll indicate for you in a moment what those are referring to. But first of all, just for navigation, we have four sections of this local style guide. We have a color palette, which will capture all of the colors in our project. We have a textile catalog. Likewise, it will capture all of the textiles. We have a spacing and layout section where we can define spacing tokens and then any components which we have exported from our design tool and are storing here locally on this project. So let me head back to the color palette here and you can see that when we exported our design from Sketch in this case, uh, Zeppelin actually recommended for us a number of colors that we might want to add to our style guide. Now I could go and add those uh, from the design directly if I was within the design uh, and I had located a color or a text style that I wanted to add to my style, gu style guide, that would appear here with this icon. So for example, I could add this color here, it would call it dirty purple, and this icon would indicate that it's now been added to the style guide. I can also link through to the style guide and I can see that this color has been selected, leaving us with the seven remaining colors, which I can add by selecting the add all colors icon. Now, any of these colors can be renamed. So if I didn't like the name Dirty Purple, I could rename this to Dark Gray or whatever name I had for it. And that way that would always be referred to as Dark Gray in the future rather than the hex code. I can do the same for text styles as well. I've got a couple of text styles which have been defined and I can click on Add All Text Styles. I can rename those text styles if I wanted to call this Medium rather than large and everywhere where this typeface, size, color and uh, alignment uh, appears, it would be referred to by this text style. Now for the spacing and layout, what I can do here is create a number of tokens that can be then referred to in the design by the token name. I'm just gonna go ahead and add a few of these right now uh, giving them the default name that's uh, been set here, but you can go and edit the text, the value, the, the pixel value here, as well as defining which is your base token. And if I wanted to rebase those, I could just select the menu option and choose to rebase that, and then everything else would calculate accordingly. I'm just gonna return that back to here. The last thing which I can do as well is I can actually change the color of these spacing tokens so that when I'm reviewing my designs, it's easier to tell which spacing token I'm referring to. So in this case, if I was to go back to my guides, select a particular element and then hover uh, over something else, you can see that the spacing S token has highlighted in this nice peach orange color. And that gives me an indication that my uh, spacing is applicable to this design with the token spacing S. Now, the last section of this uh, style guide we will cover in another video looking at components. We'll also look at global style guides and how the information in our local style guide refers to the global style guide. But for now, this is all we have for local style guides.